Good evening and welcome here to Royal Center, Indiana tonight and a what should be a really good matchup between two great softball teams here. The number one Class 2A number one Pioneer Panthers coming in at 14-0. 2-0 on the uh, for the Hoosier North Athletic Conference for the season. And they will be taking on 4A Harrison. Harrison comes in with an 11-1 record. They are 3-0 in North Central Conference play. Harrison's only loss on the season was back on April 5th at Cathedral. They lost that one 5-2. Other than that, both teams coming in with great, great records. And you can see the uh, coaches meeting here wrapping up. And uh, we're getting ready to get going should be a great game. Let's take a peek here at our lineups real quick so we can tell you the orders. Let me pull that up for you. For Harrison leading off, Whitney Duell is playing second base. Batting second, Kirsten Delaney playing shortstop. Batting third, the pitcher, Sidney Miller. Batting cleanup, the first baseman, Chelsea Parker. Batting in the fifth spot, the third baseman, number 30, Jaden Raymer. Batting in the sixth spot is the catcher, 42, Ava Mobley. We are on, there we go, Val is here with us. Ground ball to short, and the throw to first is in time. Licking staff. All right, one out, sorry about that, right? Uh, Bad timing there to get the uh, camera knock right in the fence. Second batter, right there is your okay. lineup, Val. Delaney the batter for Harrison. She takes a strike. Our good friend Mark Leedy, home plate umpire today. Delaney is a senior. She's playing short today for the Raiders. Just underway here. We have one out in the top of the first. A five, Delaney is a 5-12 hitter. 21 for 41 on the season. We've talked about their bats. They are a 389 hit, hitting team. And they're not, that's 389 against some good competition too. They, Right. <laughs> Pioneer's the only 2A team on their schedule. Right. Everybody else is 3A and 4A. It's just high. Popped up. Right. Calls it and catches it. Two down. This is Pioneer's seventh game in the last seven days. Bring up the pitcher, Sidney Miller, number 19, another senior for the Raiders. I saw her warming up, Val. She's She's got some heat. She's also a 419 hitter with two homers and 22 RBIs. Fly ball, shallow right center, Ferris. Can't hang on. A little miscommunication out there. It looked like uh, Kripe coming out and Ferris coming in, and they didn't really communicate. Ran in each other, the ball drops.
kind of want your center fielder, I think, calling that off, don't you? Yeah. Coming, coming in versus the second baseman going out. I think she had such a long run that it was hard for her to catch up. I mean, she didn't have time to to make the call because she was just so worried about getting there right. herself. First pitch ball. First baseman Chelsea Parker at the plate. Parker, a 425 hitter. Just a sophomore. One homer, 13 RBIs. Yeah, just a sophomore. Swing and a miss. Throw down to second. Not in time by Webb. Stolen base for Miller. Catcher Casey Webb, of course, uh, coming in. Joe Walker graduated. There's mm -hmm. a little blooper Crump. back. Cripes throw to first is in time to retire Parker and shut things down for the inning. No runs, no hits. One error, one left. No score between Harrison and Pioneer at the end of half an inning. You're watching RTC TV 4. All right, back here at Herc Hoffman Field, the Panthers up to bat in the bottom of the first. Take a look here at their... Lineup, Kylie Ferris leading off with Haley Kripe, McKenzie Robinson, Bell Blickenstaff, Webb, Goings, Morris, Kripe, and Adinger. The lineup here for the Panthers. And they play in on the corners. Kylie hitting 547, 29 for 53 in the season. She has 15 RBIs out of that leadoff spot as well. That's that's really good. Yeah. yeah. 15 RBIs in 14 games. Harrison's 11 and 1 on the year, and Pioneers 14 and 0. Strike. Got her swinging. Out number one brings up the senior Kansas recruit, Haley Kripe. First pitch is high. I think Haley will enjoy hitting against the speed. I, I don't think she's hitting seven. I think well, I think she enjoys hitting against everybody. She's hitting seven sixty one with <laughs> nine homers and thirty five RBIs. Not only does Haley have nine homers, but she has ten doubles and two triples. In case you're wondering what seven sixty one looks like, that's thirty five hits and forty six at bats. Foul tip. One and two. That is something that you don't see very often. Haley Kripe striking out for out number two. Yeah, it isn't just the speed, it's the movement. Mm -hmm. First pitch to Mackenzie Robinson's a strike. Might have been a screwball. It had a little movement away at the very end. Mackenzie Robinson hitting 431. She has two homers and 28 RBIs. Oh, 
popped up foul. 20 RBIs for a season is a good year for a high school softball or baseball player. Pioneer already has three girls with 20-plus RBIs. Yeah. Kripe with 35, Robinson with 28, and Shaley Goings has 23 RBIs. Ball. Part of the reason why they're the number one team in 2A. Mm -hmm. They're pretty good at this. Defending 2A state champions. Fly ball in the shallow right center field, and that'll drop for a base hit. Really good job by the senior, just battling and battling and uh, finally getting one to hit and getting out and uh, mm -hmm. with the single. So going to bring up Christabel Blickenstaff. Foul ball. Bell is hitting 351. One homer, 14 RBIs. 13 hits and 37 at bats. Strike. Well, when I think of Bell, I think of that big RBA double against Sullivan. What a huge hit that was. Got her swinging. Very good start by Miller. For Pioneer in the bottom of the first, no runs, one hit, no errors, one left. The end of half an inning. No score between Pioneer and Harrison. You're watching RTC TV 4. Going into the top of the second. No score between the Panthers and the Raiders. First pitch from Kripe to Raymer is high. Raymer, a 395 batter. Strike. Sorry about that. Hit in the air to right and caught. Kind of a looping liner. Kylie Attinger was well positioned. She caught it easily. One up, one down. We'll bring up the catcher, Ava Mobley. Sophomore for the Raiders. Yeah, that, that's the thing. They've got this is a pretty good sophomore class they have at Harrison. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah, I've been noticing uh, Raymer's a sophomore, Mobley's a sophomore, Parker's a sophomore. Strike called. This Seems is like a, a lot of seniors and a lot of sophomores. Yeah. All right, for a ball. Again, Harrison is using a DP and Pioneer isn't. That ball's launched to deep left center field. But Mackenzie Robinson makes the catch. And I think the wind might have pushed that ball back in. Yeah, it definitely had an effect on it. It sounded good off the bat, but landed pretty harmlessly in Mackenzie Robinson's glove. And that'll bring up the DP. This is Barker. Baker. Baker. Eden Baker. Yep. No R. Eden, a 355 hitter. She has 11 RBIs in the year. Good pitch. Right over the outside corner and got her swinging. One ball, one strike. Yeah, that's not a pitch she could have done a lot with, even if she had made contact, I don't think. Low. And no. 
Ground ball. Dead ball. Hit inside the box, did it? Yeah, I think that hit her foot. Fought it off her foot in the box. Okay. I was wondering why Kripe wasn't, uh, Adeline Kripe wasn't heading over to first there. I was like, hey, she's not covering. Two, two count. Got her swinging. It was a little bit of a rise ball at the end. One, two, three. Down go the Lady Raiders. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left at the end of an inning and a half. No score between Harrison and Pioneer, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Welcome back here to Herc Hoffman Field. Still no scores. We move into the bottom of the second. Casey Webb going to lead things off for the Panthers. I want to give a quick uh, schedule update. Caston uh, will play North White in softball. It'll be coming up this Thursday, May 5th. It'll be at North White. I think the original game was supposed to be played at Caston, but the weather wouldn't allow that, so they're going to get that game in. I think it's a pretty good North White team. Swing and a miss by Webb. I'd also like to give a shout-out. You know, uh, on Talking Sports with Val, we've talked a lot about Sectional 34 and how good the teams are. One team, one team that we really haven't talked about is North Newton, and they're having a really good year. Two strikes, the count on Webb. North Newton has a freshman pitcher named Sydney Rainford, and she has been great. Got her looking. Webb is the first out here in the bottom of the second. Strikeout number four for Miller. That'll bring up Goings, the third baseman. First pitch is outside. Shaley Goings is a junior. She's hitting 432. Two homers, 23 RBIs. Pioneer has 16 homers as a team. Kripe with nine. Haley Kripe has nine, but you get, again, that's good power throughout the lineup. Not, it's not just Haley. Mm hmm. Pioneer hitting 449 as a team. But uh, uh, North Newton has a win over Boone Grove. Really? So uh, this Rainford has piled up the strikeouts this year. So, And I believe Coach Rao, is, the, is he the softball coach at North Newton still? And, of course, he won two state championships as the coach at Lewis Cass. Goings goes down swinging. Five strikeouts. Strikeout number two here in the inning. That'll bring up Carly Morris. Morris comes in hitting 297. One homer, five RBIs. She is 11 for 37 on the year. Swing and a miss. Well, that looked like a like a curve or a screwball. That was. That was really dipping and diving. Miller's got heat, but that's not all she can yeah. throw. That looked like a little bit of a rise. Yeah. Kind of rode up on Morris. I think she was expecting it to come in straight and then had a good rise to it. Well, and then tied her up in on the hands and struck her out. Strikeout number six. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of two innings, no score between Harrison and Pioneer. You're watching RTC TV right, 4. Welcome back as we move into the top of the third. Leading off for Harrison is going to be number four, Emmy Layton. Layton, Lovelace, and Duel will do for Harrison here in the top of the third. Both teams only have had one runner on the bases so far through two innings. One hit for the Panthers, no hits for Harrison. So mm -hmm. been a uh, kind of as expected a, a bit of a pitching duel between these uh, two senior pitchers. Mm -hmm. 
high on the rise ball. Ball off. Ground ball in the hole, and that's going to be a base hit. Bell Blick and Staff Doe for it. It ticked off her glove, and Emmy Layton leads off the top of the third with the base hit, and that's the Harrison's first hit. Not a lot of right-handed hitters pull Haley Kripe. Bring up Lovelace, the center fielder. Strike the throw by Webb. Got In her. time. Great throw. Take another look at that one. Well, after Sidney Miller stole a bag in the first inning, you thought Harrison would continue to be aggressive, but again, when I talked, I remember talking with Coach Thomas before the year. I said, what did you like about Casey Webb? And the first thing she said was her arm. <laughs> well, she didn't miss the uh, steal by Miller by much, and she got that uh, throw out there on Layton. So, yeah, I'd say... Uh, that was uh, impressive, and the caught foul tip for out two. So. Strike cut number two for Kripe. That will bring up Whitney Duell, the second baseman. Duell grounded to shorter first time up. Came in hitting 429. No homers and six RBIs. Low. And this is a game that's going to put more pressure on the Pioneer defense than they've typically seen. Haley Kreib came in with 146 strikeouts in 58 and a third innings. And she's had a uh, game already this mm. week with 20. Line drive to left, that's a base hit for Duel. Mackenzie Robinson runs it down, the throw to second, and now she's caught in between first and second. Kreib runs at her, throw to first, and the ball is dropped and Duel will get back. Single. Boy, Harrison being really aggressive on the bases yeah. just about cost him another out. Mackenzie Robinson is a is, – is she not the best defensive outfielder that we've seen? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean she no has question. a great throwing arm. She had a huge outfield assist. Again, I don't. I hope I'm not getting too nostalgic, but she had a huge outfield assist in the Sullivan game that was one of the yeah. biggest plays in the state oh. championship game. Oh, yeah. Swing and a miss. Throw down to second. Oh. Safe this time. Just a little bit uh, to the right there. The throw was there, but uh, just pulled Blick off of the uh, base just a little bit. Stolen base for Duel. So a runner at second, two outs. Kirsten Delaney, the batter. She popped to the pitcher her first time up. As we mentioned Delaney came in hitting 5-12 on the year. She struck out twice in 41 at bats, and whoa, that one's to the chain link fence, and that'll be a wild pitch. Webb not able to get a piece of that one. So the Harrison runner moves over to third on the wild pitch, and it's a 3-1 count. Popped up, foul. Out of play. Again, if these numbers are these numbers are almost unbelievable for Harrison. In 12 games this year as a team, they have struck out 31 times total, less than three times a game <laughs> for the whole team. Wow. Again, just to put that in perspective, I mean Pioneer, a team that does a pretty good job getting, getting the bat on the ball, they've struck out 74 times. Yeah. In 14 games. Pitch. Rip to left. Base hit. Duel will score. It's gonna go all the way to the wall. 
On her way to second with the double is Kirsten Delaney. She gets an RBI, and Harrison takes a 1-0 lead. So the Raiders strike first here in the top of the third. Well, to bring up Sydney Miller, the pitcher. She reached on an error her first time up. This all started after nobody on and two out. Now they're going to talk it over. Kripe shook off a sign. Harrison lost their second game of the year to Cathedral, and they have not lost since. They have a win over Crown Point this year. Of course, Crown Point, a traditional powerhouse in the region. Interestingly enough, the closest game they've had during this 10-game winning streak was against Logansport. Really? Harrison won at Logan 6-4 back on April 21st. Ball two. And uh, that was a team that pioneered 10 run, right? Yeah. Line drive foul. Logan, Logansport just kind of a little bit of an enigma sometimes yeah. because, you know, pioneered 10 run them uh, about, what, three days after they beat Caston? Yeah, yeah. I mean. That's it, true. Harrison coming up a 7 nothing win over Bishop Chittard on Wednesday. Pioneer coming off a 9 nothing win over North Judson last night. That's a little closer score than I was expecting with Judson. I think they've only won three games coming in. They hunt, yeah, they, well, I, no, I think it was one game. Was it North just Judson one game? Just one game, yeah. I knew it wasn't very many, and I was kind of surprised to see that that one actually went uh, the full seven. Full count to Sidney Miller. I was about as surprised that that went full seven as I was that uh, Kasten ended the game with Valley early. Mm -hmm. A little warmer tonight. The wind's still kind of blowing in our faces a little bit here. Thank uh, yeah. John for letting us uh, come in the uh, press box here tonight. Hold on. This is a great view. I, I've always wanted to cover a game from here. Well, I've done it it's in here. similar to the Rochester look, but I think it's even closer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right on the fence. Yeah. I, mean, I don't even have to go out to touch the – to get the camera. Base on balls. Looks like Kreiplin with a changeup. Yeah, I was going to say, two. looks like a change there. It just uh, missed the strike zone. And these two teams played at Harrison last year, and the Raiders won that one 11 to nothing. That was on April 30th, 2021. Pioneer hasn't lost a game since. Yeah. One of the only two games they lost last year, that uh, Delphi game there early. and. Mm -hmm. Low, and Miller's not going anywhere. Pioneers won 37 consecutive games. They won their last 23 games last year, and they won all 14 games they played this year. 2-0. Yeah, so North Newton has a win over Boone Grove, and Boone Grove has a win over Hebron. Hmm. It's going to make for an interesting and, and, uh, sectional. And Hebron has a win over Winnemac. The pitch is high. Another walk. Chelsea Parker's aboard. Base is loaded. 
Bring up Raymer, the third baseman. Coach Thomas is out for a chat. But it's just going to be her and Haley and Casey Webb. You know, Haley's been in a lot of games, and, and she's been in these spots before. Right. This has been an, an especially busy week this week. I mean, they, they added that Carroll game on Wednesday. That was supposed to be played at Rochester back in, I think, April 9th. And right. That game was, I think, actually snowed out, so they decided to Pioneer and Carroll just got together and decided to schedule their own game. Throw that in. They had that three-way doubleheader against Plymouth and Whiting at Plymouth last Saturday. Again, I, th I think Haley knows to be economical with her pitches. Right. But this is, I don't care how much you work. It's a lot of work. One and two. I know Haley's up for it, too. Fall ball. Kind of a late cut there by Raymer. That would have struck out a lot of batters. Yeah. Well, they've, you know, tried to get uh, goings in and, and get, uh, you know, her some innings as well. But, you know, Haley's going to be uh, the bulk of the uh, pitches mm -hmm. that are going to be to Crite. Ground ball to third. Goings has it. Fires to first. And the ball is dropped by Morris. And two runs are going to score in the play. And moving up to third is Parker. And Harrison takes a 3-0 lead. I don't know if she would have caught that if that was going to be in time anyway. It looked like it might have been late. And it was kind of a slow roller out there to third and tough play there for Goings. Yeah, good hustle by Raymer. She forced Pioneer to maybe rush it a little bit. That'll bring up Ava Mobley. Mobley flew out to left her first time up. Mobley hitting 300. She does have four homers on the year and 14 RBIs. How many hits do you have now for Harrison? Three. Two and one. It's all started after nobody on and two out. Strike call. Two and two. Pitch is high. Full count. Mobley a sophomore. Pitches outside. That's a base on balls for Mobley. Base is loaded again for Eden Baker, the DP. Courtesy runner. That is uh, DeWitt. I'm sorry. First pitch to Baker is fouled off, and Haley Kripe gets ahead in the count 0-1. Oh, 
Come on. Got a little change there. And you talk about giving going some work, but this is definitely a game you want Haley to pitch. Right. Because this is... Popped up. Foul is a playable. Ooh, Webb can't get there. Well, she tried to go through the fence there, Val. I don't know that that's going to work very well. Oh, I thought Casey was going to overpower the fence. Ooh, she tried. Yeah. Give her credit for that, but uh, hopefully she's all right there. That was, that was a hard hit. You got to give her credit. She was focused on the ball. <laughs> I'm going to say, Coach Barry, are you watching? <laughs> uh, oh. Ball ball. Again, this team has struck out 31 times the entire year. That is incredible. They've only walked 45 times, too. So I... Oh, and you're hitting, what, four plus as a team? 389, yeah. Ball ball. Yeah, the, the top two in their order, Delaney and Duel and Delaney, those you can see right away, they're pretty good players. They're really good players. Off speed pitch, low. Another pitch in the dirt. Got her looking outside corner. Wow. That was big. He did that. But for Harrison, they score three runs in the inning. On three hits. There was an error. And three left. At the end of two and a half innings, Harrison leads Pioneer three to nothing. You're watching RTC TV. Welcome back here. Moving into the bottom of the third. As you said there, Val, Harrison gets three in the top. Now lead 3-0 over the Panthers. Adeline Kripe going to lead things off for Pioneer. It should be followed by Kylie Attinger and Kylie Ferris. Shows bunt. And they say she offered, so it's strike one. Addie Kripe hitting 326, no homers and 11 RBIs. She is 14 for 43 in the year. Millers has uh, six strikeouts here through the first two innings. Right, and this is a Pioneer team that strikes out less than six times a game. Outside. One and one. Got her swinging. Strikeout number seven for Miller. Out number one for Pioneer, and that's going to bring up Webb. Kylie Edinger, the batter. Kylie. Or sorry. Is a 525 hitter. 15, sorry. Edinger. Kylie, 21 for 40 on the year. Just high. We, we saw that Kylie, I mean, she had a group. She really came on strong at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. And she was just looking more and more comfortable, and it's kind of carried over. Big game up at uh, Wheeler. Yeah. Uh, I thought she was uh, really, really good in that one. Yep, 2-0. Uh, in that regional. A couple pair, a pair of big games then following that up in uh, semi-state. Solid game in the state championship. 
stretch is high. A hit, 3 0. Well, with Ferris on deck and Haley in the hole, I think this is an automatic take, and she might even get two take signs. Right. Strike. Three and one. Probably, like you said, another possible take here as well with the three one count. Strike two. Tell Miller knew uh, as well the situation and just throws it right down the pipe. Got a swing. Three in a row. Strikeout number eight. And then I bring up Kylie Ferris. Kylie struck out her first time. Six consecutive strikeouts from Sydney Miller. Well, as they. Uh, come through around for the second time. Let's see what the Panthers learned. 0-1. Their first trip through. Raymer playing in at third base. And Duell takes a couple steps in at second base. So if she tries to drag bun it, it's going to be easy. Oh, There's a bun and it's going to be just foul. Hit the bag and then went, oh, what a unfortunate bounce off the bag. That's about like my golf game. Yeah. It's all unfortunate bounces. Mm -hmm. well, left fielder, almost like an extra infielder. She's playing so shallow. Got her swinging, and that retires the side. Strike on number nine for Miller. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of three innings, Harrison leads Pioneer three to nothing. And you're watching RTC TV 4. Back here as we move into the top of the fourth. It's going to be Leighton leading off for Harrison. Raiders leading 3 0 here through three. Yep. Leighton, Lovelace, and Duel do up again. Sydney Miller came in with a 6 0 record and a 1.54 ERA. She had 58 strikeouts and 45 in the third innings. Not a bad ratio at all. But this has just been. Her stuff is just explosive. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's a good pitcher. Mm -hmm. No doubt about that. Fly ball to right down the line. It's going to be foul off the sidewall. And you're not really uh, going to be able to get that. So Eden Baker, their DP, she, Eden Baker also pitches uh, sometimes. She's thrown 15 and two-thirds innings. And then Hartwick is a junior. She's used, but she usually only as a pitcher. Fly ball to right. Attinger is there, and she makes the catch. Good job of making that adjustment there. Looks like that ball was moving a little on Kylie, and she got underneath it and gets the first out. Yeah, we've seen enough outfielders struggle with fly balls to know that, especially in windy conditions, that mm -hmm. nothing's as ever as easy as it looks. So I'll bring up the center fielder. Hannah Lovelace. Lovelace struck out her first time up. Lovelace the senior, and she's ahead in the count here, 1 0. Fly ball to right. Ooh, Adinger puts that one away. Good job out there again by Adinger. That one was uh, really making her work. I think with the positioning, a lot of times it's just better to 
better to be positioned too deep than too shallow. Right. Because if you have to keep backtracking and backtracking, a lot of high school kids, and, and you can even see this for high school baseball outfielders, it's, it's the more they backtrack, the more they're in trouble. Want to know the count to Whitney Duell? You're going to be able to move in a lot better than you can move out, for sure. Strike. Well, Duell singled her last time up, but that turned out to be one of the key plays in the game because she got caught in a rundown, and she was able to get back to first. And that line drive caught by Haley Kripe. <laughs> Quick reflexes. Oh, yeah. It's like she's played sports before. Yeah, she's done this once or yeah. twice. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of three and a half innings, Harrison leads Pioneer three to nothing. All right, moving into the bottom of the fourth here at Herc Hoffman Field, and it's going to be Kripe leading off for the Panthers, trailing 3-0 to the Harrison Raiders after three and a half. Harrison went 21-8 and eight last year. They beat McCutcheon and Kokomo to win their sectional in Class 4A. One of falling to Noblesville in the regional. They avenged that loss to Logan's to uh, Noblesville earlier this year. Foul ball. And in case you're wondering, no, Ashlyn Shade does not play softball. Huh. Yeah, Harrison went 21 and 8 last year, but they lost twice to Noblesville. Lost to him in the regular season. Lost him in the regional. Strike. Harrison lost to uh, yeah. Harrison lost to Kokomo in the regular season last year. He came back and beat Kokomo in the sectional sectional final. Low. You know, you, you mentioned that with Ashlyn Shade and, and uh, softball. That just makes what you know this Panthers teams, uh, these Panther teams did last year just. That much more impressive. Yeah. You know, Haley Kripe was the leader on all three of those state championship teams with the volleyball team. And, of course, she's the all-time leading scorer for the mm -hmm. Pioneer Lady Panthers basketball team. She's led the state in home runs the last two seasons they've played in softball. I mean, she's just a do-everything type, type yeah. of player. I this, mean. Is, this is living history. We're in the middle of history every time mm -hmm. you go and – see these kids play with what they've done. Golfed to left. Foul and out of play. Foul ball. Line drive in the right center field. It'll draw for a base hit. So that ends the streak of seven consecutive strikeouts. And Haley's now one for two. To bring up Mackenzie Robinson. Good piece of hitting there by the senior Kreit. Robinson singled her first time up. Foul ball on the bunt. Question is, do you test the arm of Ava Mobley here? <laughs> Kripe's got some wheels. and If you're down by one, and it's maybe a different thought process than if you're down by three. Pitch is high.
two and one. Chased a pitch. I think it was out of the zone. Five ball to shallow left, and it's caught. One down, and Robinson's now one for two. Got a big yeah. baseball game going on just uh, south of here with the Carroll Cougars and the Rochester Zebras. Mm -hmm. They just started about half an hour ago, so we'll get you some updates on those when we get them. Popped up foul and out of play. Bell Blickenstaff struck out her first time. Swing and a miss. Good to see Bell back in action after missing the uh, basketball season with a uh, foot injury. Mm -hmm. Looks like she's back to uh, 100%. So she's wearing like a, like a little guard or protection on her right ankle. As she swings and misses for the second out of the inning. <coughs> Strikeout number 10 for Miller. I heard, so, was that Haley who yelled, trust your hands to Bell? I think it was the first base coach. It might have been the first base coach. Casey Webb is the batter. She takes high. Rise ball high, drove down to first by Mobley, not in time. I liked Haley's reaction on that. She just kind of steps back on the bag like, really? <laughs> you just threw down to first? Well, facing a pitcher like this, you'd, uh, you'd have to think it would be a, it's going to really help when you, you know, you, if you get to this section, you have to face Minert from Boone Grove or Rainford from North Newton or... Or uh, the pitcher from Hebron, uh, Carmichael, is that her name? Strike. I mean, she was impressive last year as a freshman, Carmichael. Mm -hmm. yeah. Watch, I'm calling her the wrong name. <laughs> I'm no, going, I'm I'm going with you on yeah, that I'm one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm not. I think I think you got it right. Foul ball. Full count here for Webb. Let's see if she can... Uh, Hold off Miller. Miller has just, she's been uh, pitching a gem out there in the circle so far for Harrison. Got her looking. I think that was kind of like a off speed pitch. I didn't really get a change up or something and I got caught looking at it. Strike at number 11. Pioneer in the fourth. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left. At the end of four. Harrison leads Pioneer three to nothing, and you're watching RTC Welcome TV. Welcome back four. here, moving into the fifth. Harrison still has a 3 0 lead. Delaney leading off for the Raiders. Kirsten Delaney will be followed by Sidney Miller and Chelsea Parker. One another count. Softball update Bremen leads Rochester 11 to 2, top of the fourth. Meeting today at Bremen. Of course, let's see Pioneer will face. Pioneer will face Bremen. The Twin Lakes invite. Coming up next weekend. 2-0. Oh. Okay, Steve, trivia time. Uh-oh. I think you know the, what the question is going to be. How many sectional titles has Harrison won in softball? I said they lost in the regional last year, so you know the answer is at least one. All right. Strike. Boy. I know they've... It seems like all of their sports over there on the girls' side, anyway, have been good for a long Strike. time. I'm going to say eight. Correct answer is 19. Oh. They have yeah. won 19, and Pioneers won 21. Line drive to left center field. It's a base hit. Flagged down by Mackenzie Robinson. She'll get it in quickly. A leadoff base hit for Kirsten Delaney here in the fifth. Boy, she is a player. Yeah. 
Delaney now two for three, and that'll bring up Sydney Miller. Miller has reached in an error and walked, so she's 0 for 1, but she has scored a run. Of course, there was no, uh, Harrison won the sectional last year. There was no season in 2020, and Harrison also won sectionals in 2019 and 2018, so they've won three in a row, or at least three the last three times it's been played outside. So out of those 19, have they made it on to any state championships? Okay, I'll have to do some more oh. research here. <laughs> Trivia question. Yeah. That was a little high throw down there. Good job by Miller or uh, Carly Morris to uh, get uh, back and get that catch. Strike. Two one here to Miller. Parker on deck. All right, for a ball. Throw back, not in time. Harrison has won six regionals in softball. Most recently in 2013. Fly ball, right field, foul, but is it playable? Nope, out of play. Put in play, up the middle. Oh, nice job. Pell Blickenstaff gets the force out. She crawled over and tags the base. Great job there by Bell. So Miller now on at first, and then that's DeWitt coming in. It's a courtesy runner. Kelsey Parker, the batter. Parker's grounded back to the pitcher and walked. My ball. Ball. Just missed on the inside corner on that one. That was a nice pitch. Got a little off speed there by Kripe. No state championships for Harrison in the softball. Strike. Their rivals from McCutcheon won one in 2008. Jim Bates, legendary coach at McCutcheon for a long, long time. In fact, I think they named their ballpark Jim Bates Field. Two and two. I believe that's the big rivalry, right? Harrison and McCutcheon. Yeah, I would say that's a pretty big rivalry. Up to center field and deep. Back to the wall, and that ball is gone. She hit it out. Two-run homer for Chelsea Parker. And Harrison leads five to nothing. But that was a she hit it so hard, I didn't think it was gonna go, but it also kept rising. Mm -hmm. Kind of a line drive. I mean, it didn't have a lot of height to it, but uh, it had yeah. distance by a lot there to get over center field fence. Five nothing Harrison. I'm going to bring up Jaden Raymer. Ball one. Raymer lined her right her first time up. And one of the biggest plays of the game when she came up last time up in the third. She had a ground ball to third. The throw to first might have gotten her, or might not have, but the ball was dropped and two runs wound up scoring the play. And that's ripped down the third baseline for a base hit. Robinson gets it in, but that's a single for Raymer. The runner at first with one out. I'll bring up Ava Mobley, the sophomore catcher. That is the third home run Haley Kripe has allowed this year. Low. Again, 
Three home runs in about 63 innings, and this is a pretty small ballpark. Not bad. But Parker got her there. 2-0 the count to Mobley. Mobley's flown out to left and walked. Two and one. That ball is ripped to deep left field. Back to the wall, and that ball is gone. A two-run homer for Ava Mobley. And it is seven to nothing. That was into the wind, and the wind was trying to push it back. And not quite good enough. That might be it. Haley had only given up two home runs before today's game, and she, now she's given up two home runs in one inning. This Harrison team is well worth the uh, price of admission as far as their hitting goes, Val. Yeah. I mean, you, you yeah. talk about them being almost a 400-hitting team, and they don't strike out much, they don't walk much because they hit the ball. Yeah. We're going to have a pitching change with Shaley Goings coming in. Guessing Haley will go to short. Haley Kripe will go to shortstop. I'm guessing Bell Blick and Staff will move to third base. We'll see. A uh, little tighter look at the junior Shaley Goings. Going to be taking over here in the top of the fifth with one out. The final score: Bremen has defeated Rochester 13 to two in six innings. Bremen, just a another one of those teams in in that 2A division that. I mean, they've just been tough in softball mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. Remember back, you know, obviously, uh, you know, with Koffel, but back even before that with uh, Chelsea Hubbard. Uh, she was a, a stud there at Bremen. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, I mean, Koffel's... She's just the latest greatest player right. they've had. They've right. had a lot of great ones over the years. She is uh, she's the real deal, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has been great down at Kentucky. Too bad we couldn't have kept her in state. But mm -hmm. she's got 16 homers on the season at Kentucky. Ripped to center, and that's deep. Nice catch by Kylie Ferris. Baker now 0 for three. She got a hold of that one, though. Sent it for a ride. Comes mm -hmm. up just a little bit short. Out number two. And that'll bring up the left fielder, Emmy Layton. Layton has singled and flown out to right. One for two. Ball one. Just high. Pioneer does not do wristbands. At least not with their pitchers. It looked like Shayla Goings was kind of looking at the dugout and then looking at Webb. But I, I'm i not sure why you would look at the dugout, but maybe there was something they were just yelling out at her. Yeah. Maybe she was just... Quick mechanical adjustment, but in terms of calling the pitches, that's Casey Webb looking at Gabby Thomas. Two and one. Ball three. 
Well, and, you know, I was talking with Greg Zippelman last night after the game there at Caston, and, and they pretty much, he said, you know, uh, Bell Scales pretty much calls 90, 95, 96% yeah. of the pitches. And I talked with Kinsey Molenkov after the game, and she she kind of verified that comment. We, we had two independent conversations with you. As uh, Leighton flies out to center, Kylie Ferris makes the catch. We'll talk about that more when we get back. But it is a uh, four-run inning for Harrison. There were four hits. No errors and nobody left. At the end of four and a half innings, Harrison leads Pioneer 7 to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Well, welcome back here to Herc Hoffman Field. And uh, Harrison did something that, that you haven't seen uh, anybody do with uh, two home runs on Haley Kripe there in the yeah. top of the fifth. They now lead 7-0. This is a yeah, – that, that's what makes this sport so interesting. You can say it's the same, it's the same thing about baseball. It's humbling. Yeah. Humbling sport. Yeah. And you're talking about a Division One caliber player, and if you don't make – if you don't – Execute your pitch exactly how you want against a good hitter. It'll take you deep. 0-1-1, the count to Goings. She'll be followed by Morris and Adeline Kripe. Goings is 0-for-1 with a strikeout. Low. I think that was a curve. That. And you see Miller does use a wristband. That might, that might have even been a drop. So I'm going to miss. Talking to Rick Gottschall uh, before the game here, and, and we were just talking about Haley and how things were going down at USI. And mm -hmm. She's, you know, learning that uh, college college life is, is, is a Ground lot ball. of really Oh, what a stop. And the throw to first is in time. Wow. Great play there for out number one. Kirsten Delaney. That was sensational. I mean, we've seen kids dive to stop a ball, but to throw it from there in the hole, oh, my goodness. Cameron Newby going to come in here in uh, bat for Morris. Anyway, I guess Haley's doing really well. She just uh, her mm -hmm. playing time has has dropped so a little. What, as a what, you, what you're saying is dorm food. She doesn't like dorm food. Uh, it could be, yeah. <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. she's she's having to kind of adjust to watching a little bit more than she's been used to over the last yeah. four years. But uh, swing and a miss. Newbie is uh, one for two on the season, so hitting 500. Yeah, I mean. She's she's gotten opportunities to pitch and done really well. It's just there's yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of people that <laughs> yeah are, are there that can pitch as well. Reading you know reading my old stories from Pioneer last year. Well, I'm not that I'm not that old, but I mean what a hitter she was too. I mean mm -hmm. my gosh, if she never threw a pitch, she'd be was she not in the top ten in the state in homers, top five, and a huh. great diving catch by Raymer on the wow. bunt try by Newby. I don't know what was going on there, but Whitney Duell and Chelsea Parker having a big laugh. After Raymer gets her uniform dirty, swing and a miss to Adeline Kripe. Addie struck out her first time. Just do it, kid. Gabby Thomas yells. Ball. Addie, of course, the younger sister of Haley, is sophomore for the Panthers. Yeah, she said the drive to Lawrence, Kansas is eight hours and pretty flat. Gets a hit. Delaney can't get that one. Addie Kripe has a base hit. 
Able to get that just past Delaney, and uh, Kripe is aboard with two outs. Yeah. Yeah, you know that's, that's sisterly love there. If you can take that eight-hour drive to Lawrence, Kansas. Be able to describe it like that. Kylie Attinger. Well, they must be hauling because my brother lives in southeast Kansas, and it takes me about uh, ten and a half hours to get there. Okay. I know Lawrence is a little farther west, but it's also not as far south, too, I guess. So. How about? One and one to Kylie Attinger. Kylie struck out her first time up. She was ahead in the count 3-0, and oh, and Miller came back to strike her out. My oldest nephew uh, graduated from University of Kansas. Chemical engineer. Ground ball fielded by Miller, and she throws to Parker for the out. Attinger was hustling, but Miller fired over there and got her out. For Pioneer in the fifth, no runs. One hit, no errors, and two great defensive plays, and one left. At the end of five innings, Harrison leads Pioneer 7 0, and you're watching RTC TV 4. All right, welcome back as we move into the top of the sixth. Lovelace going to lead off here for Harrison. The Raiders leading 7 0. Lovelace will be followed by Duel and Delaney. Lovelace is 0 for 2. She went 0 for 2 against Haley Cripe. She struck out and flew out to right. Shaley Goings in the circle here as she starts her first full inning. Ball. <laughs> Strike. Busy week for us this week, Val. We were able to get uh, a lot of games in, so the weather was not great, but at least it was uh, suitable to play some uh, softball and baseball this week. Yeah. Strike call, two and two. Another busy week coming up next week. We'll be at Rochester on Monday for baseball with Northfield. Yep. Ground ball to short. Throwing from her knees. And yeah. Haley Crab gets her. Well, she says, you can do it. I can do it better. And uh, out number one. And we'll take another look at that play there by the senior Crab. <laughs> what do we always say? If you come and watch Haley Crab play... You are going to see she is going to play like you've never seen her play before. First pitch is outside to duel. Nothing on Tuesday broadcast-wise. We'll be back at uh, Rochester on Wednesday for uh, Rochester and Manchester. And uh, possibly going to be going down to Kokomo on Thursday. We're going to do some testing there next week and see if we can do that game with Eastern. If not, we have uh, plans to go up to Argus for a lacrosse game. Mm -hmm. Count us 3-0 on Whitney Duell. Duel has grounded short, singled, and lined back to the pitcher. Strike. Another strike. Goings was down on the count 3 0. She's worked the count back full. Base on balls.
Duel on base for the second time in this game. And that will bring up Kirsten Delaney. Delaney is two for three. Popped to the pitcher. She had an RBI double and came around to score back in the third and then singled back in the fifth. Strike. And Harrison scored three in the third and four in the fifth. On two run homers by Parker and Mobley. Parker to straightaway center and Mobley pulled one just over the left field fence. Way foul into the... And that's Delaney kind of making the adjustment. Shaley Goings does not throw as hard as Haley Kripe. Yanking one way foul on the pull side. Hopped up. And a line Kripe makes the catch. Runner at first with two outs now. That would bring up Sidney Miller. Miller's 0 for 2. She's reached in an air. She's walked. And last time up, she grounded into a force out with Bell Blickenstaff robbing her. Round one to the hole. Kripe can get it. Going for third is Duel. And moving on into second is Miller. Call that a base hit. Goes to second on the throw. Duel goes from first to third. And Duel running on contact with two outs, and she wasn't stopping as she saw the ball get redirected in the left field off the, I guess off the foot of Kripe. Chelsea Parker, the batter. Pitch is high. Parker is grounded back to the pitcher, walked, and last time up she had a two-run homer. So one for two, two RBIs, and a run scored. <laughs> Ball. Two now. <laughs> Up and in. Ball three. Let's see if Parker has the green light here. Again, a long ball would get it to 10. Strike. Yeah. Take call there. Three and one. Line drive in the left field that will drop in front of Robinson. Runners were going on contact, so two runs will score on that play. A two out, two run single for Chelsea Parker, and she's got four RBIs in this game. And it is nine to nothing. The ball was sinking fast. Again, Parker. Good power. Just able to muscle it out on the left. First pitch from Goings to Raymer is a strike. Raymer is lined to right. Reached on an air. Singled her last time up. Hit by a pitch. Runners at first and second with two outs. Goings <laughs> looks in against Ava Mobley. Pitch is a little bit high.
Which is outside. Pioneer baseball team also playing today, playing Culver. That one's here, right? They were at Culver last night. So. Winnemac at Caston tonight in baseball. Winnemac beat Caston at home on Thursday, 7-1. to one. Comets had nine errors in that game. Based first, on uh, first time the home teams won that game in a while. I think they split last year and both road teams won. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, bases loaded, two out. The batter is Eden Baker. Big game for Comets, uh, you know, to keep uh, pace in the conference there if they can mm -hmm. split with the Winnemac. Pioneers baseball team is right there in the race as well. Mm -hmm. They're five and one now, I believe. Right, lost to Winnemac earlier in the week, so they have uh, a sweep of Culver would be pretty important. Yeah, they have another game with Winnemac yet to play later. That's yeah. kind of an odd. Normally they play back to back. Right. Baker's zero for three. Pitches outside. Struck out twice against Kripe, and then she was the first batter the Goings faced in the fifth and flew out to center. Popped up. Haley Kripe with the call and the catch, and that retires the side. Harrison scores two more runs. Two hits. No errors. They do leave the bases loaded. At the end of five and a half innings, Harrison leads Pioneer nine to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV. Come back here as we move into the bottom of the sixth. Harrison leads nine zero, and top of the order here for the Panthers. Kylie Ferris going to lead things off. See if the Panthers can uh, get on the board here in the sixth inning. Baseball update, Rochester and Carroll are tied 2-2, top of the third. Strike. Miller still in the circle for Harrison. She's uh, pitched a great game for the Raiders. Foul ball. Got her. Oh. Kylie came in a 547 hitter, but she is 0 for 3 in this game. Strike at number 12. Haley Kripe steps in. She is 1 for 2 with a strikeout and a single. Puts the first pitch into play. It's a fly ball to medium depth left. Medium deep center, that is. And it's caught. Hannah Lovelace making the catch on that fly ball to center by Haley Kripe. Two up, two down. I'll bring up Mackenzie Robinson. Robinson is singled and flown out to left. Kenzie Robinson with 28 RBIs with nine extra base hits on the year. She's ahead here in the count 2-0. Oh. Strike. That's the thing that another thing that impresses me about Miller, she doesn't fall behind in the count very often. And even when she does, she doesn't really give in. Mm -mm. And Pioneer can't get the aggressive cuts that you would think they would be getting. Yeah. 
uh, that a really good hitting team would be getting. She's not afraid when she gets behind. Yeah. At all. Right. Again, for, uh, for a pioneer hitter to swing and miss on a 2-1 pitch, uh, again, that, that just says something about what kind of pitcher she is. This is Kenzie Robinson's not just some other hit, some hitter. She's, right, right. She's really, really good. Ball three, low. I mean, you're talking you're talking girls that played on the team that won the state championship right. last year. I mean, it's yeah. Right, you're up two two zero in the count, two one in the count. You're looking your chops like I'm gonna get I'm gonna get me a good pitch to get, I'm gonna mm -hmm. get myself a good pitch to hit here. Yep. And, but Miller just continues to execute. Pop up, shortstop Delaney makes the catch, and that retires the side. Kind of hit that off the end of the bat there. Yeah. I don't think that caught the meat. For Pioneer in the bottom of the sixth, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of six innings, Harrison leads Pioneer 9 to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV. As we forward. move into the seventh for the Harrison Raiders, they lead 9-0 coming to the plate here in the top. Goings going to be in the circle again here for the Panthers. I mean, Layton going to be leading off for Harrison. It's been a great pitching performance here by the Harrison Raiders senior, Sidney Miller, holding the... Yeah. Dangerous Pioneer Panthers to only three hits, no runs scored here. Layton one for three with a single, a fly out to right, and a fly out to center. Popped up right side toward the line, and it drops foul. Layton singled in the third, flew out to right, leading off the third. She flew out to right, leading off the fourth. Flew out to center to make the final out in the fifth. Harrison has left the bases loaded twice in this game. They've also scored nine. In 12 games, Harrison had scored 118 runs, so about 10 a game, and they've put nine up on the board today. Against a Division I pitcher. Round ball to Morris, and she wins the race to the bag. Layton is the first out in the top of the seventh. <laughs> 118 runs in 12 games for Harrison. 172 runs in 14 games for Pioneer. As Steve Stone would say, a whopping total. <laughs> First pitch to Hannah Lovelace is a strike. Uh, that is not Hannah Lovelace. Hannah Felke coming in, batting. She is a junior. <laughs> yeah, I threw you off because you were they were saying, "Come on, Hannah! Come on, Hannah!" And yeah. that's what we were expecting to hear, but uh, d different Hannah. Hannah and her pinch hitters. Yeah, <laughs> the newest movie by Woody Allen. <laughs> Ground ball foul. Is he even still alive? That's what they say. Is he? <laughs> yeah. One on one. Strike. Nice pitch. Got her looking. Two up, two down. Strikeout number one for Goings. Well, to bring up Whitney Duell, the second baseman. Duell stepping in there for the fifth time. She's grounded to short. She's singled. She's lined to the pitcher, and, and she has walked. She is one for three, and she scored twice. She gets down a bunt, but it's a foul ball. Get away, get away, get away. 
And the sectional draw is coming up on Sunday, 7 p.m. Ball ball, 0 and 2. Little looping liner or over goings is heading into shallow center field for base hit. Whitney Duell has her second hit of the game. Baseball draw also uh, on Sunday, I think, is that 6? Six? 6 and 7? Is that how that's uh, going? 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. Softball and eight. draw at 7 p.m. Baseball at 8. Yep. This is a pinch hitter, uh, Dugan. Pitch hitting for Delaney. Kirsten Delaney. If you're watching at home and you want to mm -hmm. find out how to get there, it's just IHSATV.org to uh, watch those shows live if you'd like. Line drive to left center field. That will drop, and it will roll deep. Trying to score, and the throw at the plate is going to be not in time, and in the third is Dugan. RBI double, and Harrison leads 10 to nothing. Goes to third on the throw. Kind of sliced one right in between the Ferris and Robinson. Of course, if you don't want to go through the effort of watching that uh, softball baseball draw on live, you could always check out Val's Twitter. He'll have those that information for you as well. Ground ball is short, knocked down by Kripe. Oh, nice dig by Morris. That was not a great throw. Morris kind of kept her hands relaxed, was able to dig it out. Nice play. But for Harrison, one run, two hits, no errors, one left. At the end of six and a half, Harrison leads Pioneer 10 to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV. All four. right, welcome back as we move into the bottom of the seventh here. The Panthers trailing 10 0. And Blickenstaff is going to lead things off here for the Panthers. It looks like uh, their win streak is going to be over here tonight. The last time the Panthers lost was to this Harrison team at Harrison mm -hmm. last year. Blickenstaff looks to bunt, falls I one off. She's down in the count 0 1. Bill is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Miller has struck out 12 in this game. She hasn't needed a lot of help from her defense, but when she's needed it, she's gotten it. She has, for sure. Saw that one great one. Uh, diving play by the shortstop. Pop pile out of play, 0-2. Harrison uh, bats have been hot as well. Two home runs tonight. Got her swinging. Strikeout number 13. Misha Price going to be batting now for Casey Webb. And Misha's 0 for 2 in the season. Swing and a miss. Casey Webb was 0 for 2 while she was in there. Swing and a miss. You mentioned Pioneers added a non-conference game against Kankakee Valley. 
as Price goes down swinging for strikeout number 14. It's Kankakee Valley here on Friday, May 20th. And add in the Twin Lakes invite, and there will be plenty of, and I think Pioneer's going to play Benton Central as well. So plenty more opportunities for Pioneer to face quality competition, especially as they get ready not only for the postseason, but the May 17th game against here against Caston. Owen won the count to goings. He is struck out, and she was robbed by Kirsten Delaney and a grounder to short back in the fifth. Sensational play by Delaney. Popped up. Foul. This could do it. Mobley. Oop. Can't quite get there. She's <laughs> staggered by that. I think her first baseman was laughing a little bit there. Yeah, and Mobley's like, I didn't find that funny. <laughs> right? Not a bit. Trying to trying to judge that ball with that wind. Got her looking, and the ball game is over. And one of the most amazing streaks out of all streaks in this run for Pioneer Girls Sports has come to an end. Their 37-game winning streak is over. As Harrison defeats Pioneer 10 to nothing. <laughs> 